Dear participants, and delegates and organizing committee members of the Faculty Development Program on Creativity, Innovation and New Product Development. Greetings from Botswana and a very good day to one and all present here. I am Suresh Shanmugasundaram, Professor from Botho University, Botswana. I would like to take this opportunity for inviting me to do this address and my presentation is on innovation and challenge-driven approach. It always gives me immense pleasure to have this kind of dialogues and I'm glad to share some of the best practices and I strongly believe it's mutually beneficial. Please be safe by maintaining a good hygiene to mitigate the spreading of this virus. I also take this opportunity to congratulate the organizing committee members for planning and executing such a kind of a technical forum, which is the need of the hour. Okay, uh, let me start with my address, the actual purpose of being here. Uh, before that, I would like to present you the outline of this session. Firstly, it will be an introduction of the country where I'm currently residing, and then it will be the introduction of the university where I'm working. Then I will share the experiences and challenges that we had faced while practicing CDE framework in our context. CDE stands for Challenge Driven Education. I will also present the advantages and improvisation areas identified, and I will be touching upon the methodology with a brief summation followed by conclusion. Okay, uh, let me introduce you to Botswana. And I will not be surprised if I get a wrong answer if I ask you, where is Botswana? This is because I was also ignorant about the geographical facts of Botswana before my arrival here. As some of you might have rightly guessed, Botswana is in Africa. To be even precise, the Republic of Botswana is a landlocked country located in southern Africa. Citizens are referred as Botswana and the singular form of it is Motswana. It is interesting to note as per the list of per capita nominal GDP for countries and dependencies, Botswana ranks 76th in the world by nominal GDP per capita, which comes to around 7,584 US dollars. Just to give a comparison, India is ranked 139. Please note uh, that there are 10 districts in southern districts majorly populated and about 86% of the country's income is from diamond mining. Yes, the country is economically strong and the population is low, which is about 2.3 million. In terms of the country's vision towards education, the government felt that education and development are indispensable. And hence, the students are sponsored to pursue tertiary education and higher education. And when I say sponsorship, it includes student fees, living expenses and allowances for buying books and stationery. Just to give you more perspective on the country, I have put these images. While the urban areas are growing at a very good pace, the country still maintains its closeness to nature. The northern part of the country has about 300,000 elephants. There is a unique feature when it comes to Botswana's border. In the image, uh, you see the aerial view of uh, Victoria Falls, which is one of the largest one in terms of height. And in terms of the border, which I was uh, uh, talking in the previous slide, in the northern side of the country, there is a border called Kazankula. And as, at Kazankula, the territories of four countries, Zambia, Botswana, Zimbabwe and Namibia, come close to meet at a quadri point. In fact, I have visited that quarry point, which is located in the river. Another interesting point is that this river is one of the main source that contributes for Victoria Falls. I will take this opportunity to invite you to this uh, country and it will certainly be once in a lifetime experience 
for those who love to travel and explore wildlife. The university where I'm currently working is Boto University. Boto University is Botswana's largest private tertiary educational provider founded in 1997. We have established campuses in other countries like Lesotho, Namibia and Eswatini. In the picture you are seeing the aerial view of the Haberoni campus, lecture halls, a graduation ceremony and a shopping mall called the Game City which is a close proximity to the university. Many of us are aware of what's shown in this image, the sustainable development goods. Today's society faces a range of global challenges, including economic, social and environmental problems. A globally shared view of these major challenges were the base when the sustainable development goals were established in the United Nations 2030 agenda in 2015. There are 17 sustainable development goals and 169 specific targets that represents the areas of critical importance for the planet and humanity over a period of 15 years. Since we are all in the education sector, it's very important for, for us to note this down. Education for sustainable development is specifically addressed in the Sustainable Development Goal Target 4.7 that says, by 2030, ensure that all learners acquire the knowledge and skills needed to promote sustainable development. Now, the question that lies before us is why do we have to focus on sustainable development and innovation? The answer is simple and you will be able to appreciate by looking at this chart. In the year 1960, the global population was about 3 billion and in 2010, the global population is around 7 billion. In 50 years, if you see, the growth is manifold. By 2050, it is projected to reach about 10 billion. When there is growth in population, there is huge demand that keeps on growing on, which eventually pushes towards more production. And the process of production certainly depletes the natural resources. And just think about the future generation. They'll be left with little or no resources like water, air, etc. To overcome this situation, it has become important for engineers to put more emphasis on sustainable development. Then comes the question of how to maintain or achieve sustainability through innovation. The answer is again a simple comparison on what we were doing and what we should be doing and when we should have started this. We all should agree that we have started this late and we have a lot to resolve. This is clearly emphasized in this image. Adding to this, the year 2020 we have a very unique scenario that's due to the pandemic that has created several issues and challenges around us. In the current scenario, due to the pandemic, several things have affected, including the overall cash flow dropped to 16 percentage and has opened up avenues towards virtual workplace, including the academic setting. Now, we as the professionals gathered in this forum have an important responsibility to find ways of achieving these goals. I assume we are a forum that has a budding engineer to a mature scholar and we will certainly engage in some projects in the near future. Some of us might already be engaged in such projects. Our responsibility towards sustainable society will be partially achieved 
if we deduce the research objectives or a problem statement from the SDGs. Like I had alluded before, this pandemic has created challenging ways of living and at the same time opened up several other new avenues for learners and graduates who will have access to blended mode of learning that would enhance their independent study skills. If you are a supervisor in any project, do not hesitate to direct your scholars or students towards these SDGs, even if they're doing a mini project. With this, we will certainly be able to work towards achieving a sustainable nation. By having this preamble, I believe we should be able to appreciate sustainability in engineering and thus identifying innovative ways to accomplish this. Let me quote a well-known example of computer recycling, or you, you can even consider recycling mobile phone devices. Sustainable engineering is a process of designing or operating systems such that they use energy and resources sustainably. In other words, at a rate that does not compromise the natural environment or the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. The primary aim or objective to recycle the electronic gadgets is to prevent pollution, manage waste effectively, and thus contribute towards achieving SDGs. You can see that this will help us to move towards pollution prevention, waste prevention, less resource waste, and environmental restoration. This typically shows that use of renewable energy such as wind and solar. Innovation can be seen where the car park is covered with solar panels. That means there is no need of extra space to install solar panels. In 1987, the report, Our Common Future, more informally called the Brundtland Report, was published defining sustainable de development as development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. It is clear that a large scale educational transformation is needed to address challenges relating to sustainable development. One framework that is still under evolution is the challenge driven education abbreviated as CDE. Challenge Driven Education, abbreviated as CDE, as I already mentioned, is a relatively new concept and still in evolution. CDE can be seen as an extension or evolution of PBL, which is also known as Problem Based Learning. To connect external stakeholders with university students, aiming to gain experience by introducing the actual societal challenges in their full complexities and to implement diversity within student groups and to form multidisciplinary teams that have been an important factor since the beginning of CDE and the more or less synonymously denoted challenge-based learning. The challenges are open-ended and requires knowledge and skills in multiple areas and therefore provides an opportunity for students to acquire key competencies for sustainability. The challenge-driven education comes up with some unique characteristics that makes it more student-centric. To sum the characteristics of CDE, uh, let's start one by one. It comprises of learning activities where learning takes place through the identification, analysis, design of a solution-oriented proposal to a socio-technical problem. The next characteristic is uh, involvement of challenge owners or stakeholders. Now, handling a challenge which is typically multi and transdisciplinary 
involves challenge owners, actors that have an active interest in the solution to the challenge, as well as various stakeholders such as citizens and end users. You can see the real-time challenges in airport management system that has several tasks that has to be aligned towards the takeoff or landing of a flight. A student must be able to visualize such challenges in the real-time scenario and CDE approach helps to build this skill. The other characteristic that's also found in BBL is uh, working in teams. Now students working in teams by analyzing the challenge in the dialogue with the challenge owners, being assessed formative and summative by student peers, teachers and stakeholders throughout the project. Challenge-driven education helps students by training competencies needed for being able to act towards a sustainable society by inculcating innovative strategies. Now, we all know that engineering education has a practical orientation. The need to close the gap between engineering education and practice was taken into account in several initiatives in the late 1990s and the early 2000s. Parallel with the increased practical focus in engineering education, a shift from a lecturer and teacher oriented environment to a more student centered and participant directed learning took place. Rethinking the teacher role as well as an emphasis on learning by doing and focus on hands-on problem solving was some of the in incentives that led the way to the development of PBL problem-based learning which has now turned into challenge-driven education model as well. We have been looking at these two models the problem-based and the challenge-based. Though they look similar they have subtle differences in terms of problem complexity, disciplines involved, and the involvement of stakeholders. You can also see the differences in terms of the steps that are followed in these two models. Apparently, you will see formulating the challenge is quite open in the CDE as opposed to analyzing the problem that's more specific in PBL. Now, let me reiterate the definition of the challenge-driven education framework. A challenge-based learning experience is a learning experience where the learning takes place through the identification, analysis, and design of a solution to a socio-technical problem which relates to the global challenges. The learning experience is typically multidisciplinary, involves challenge owners as well as various stakeholders such as citizens and end users. The learning experience will often take place in an international context and aims to find a collaboratively developed solution which is environmentally, socially and economically sustainable. Now let me quickly touch upon like how we started uh, CDE approach and how we implemented CDE approach at Bhutto University. And I would also like to share some of the challenges that we had faced during the implementation of a CDE approach at Bhutto University. Uh, to begin with, uh, KTH Sweden, it's the Royal Institute of Technology from Sweden and Bhutto University partnered together to implement this framework. This started in the year 2017 and we had several face-to-face -face meetings both in Stockholm and Botswana. Uh, so you will be able to see the picture. Uh, there are two images. The first one shows the uh, snowy image of KTH building and the second image is 
uh, where we had a, a discussion outside it was a kind of an activity where we were involved with the stakeholders and uh, the university uh, team in kth sweden i hope uh, you are able to spot me there just at the background in the center and then we started to have academic exchanges uh, both students and staff especially to have a multidisciplinary teams for addressing a common challenge the common challenge could be in stockholm or it could be in botswana successfully we have been doing this every year since then all these years of implementing this framework helped us to understand this in a better way the first and foremost point was that it helped us to understand the skills that has to be improvised among our learners one of the key skill that was identified for embedding innovation in their minds is design thinking now this is one of the key challenges that we are still trying to address a need to build trust between academics and the industry it is noted that in certain cases that industry does not trust the academia and their locally produced solutions also industry consider the solutions from university to be too theoretical our experience shows that building trust and confidence is seen as important factor that could impact on the success of the CDE framework. Despite a few recommendations for better improvisation, we also had some positive feedback about this challenge-driven approach. The overall challenge-driven education idea and concept was commended well and received well in, among most of the student groups. The foremost advantage with CDE is that uh, participating in CDE projects uh, have facilitated the trust and confidence building between university and industry. It has changed the perception of the other in a positive way during a CDE collaboration. One advantage with CDE from the stakeholders view is the fact that the end product is custom made solutions brought in from foreign companies does not necessarily fit the needs of the local environment as well as when the local students create it as we had some positive factors we also had some areas uh, where we had to improvise and there were a set of recommendations that actually helped us to you know improve and focus on these areas the first one is engaging student projects you know can be time consuming especially when they are dealing with external stakeholders so the external stakeholders highlighted that collaborating with students both in cde projects and other settings can be very time consuming for them the process was very time consuming, especially initially when students needed to be provided with a lot of information. One suggested improvement is that the course administrators should be clear from the beginning how much time the involvement will take. The difficulty and importance of the external stakeholders not imposing their own bias on the students during the CDE project evaluation was also highlighted. External stakeholders might not get provided with enough information on how to avoid bias, neither how to formulate the challenges. Okay. 
we all know that universities offer programs at various levels of degrees uh, challenge driven education can be implemented in all levels of education due to the mission of the phd students have of contributing to the general knowledge of the scientific community it proves to be difficult to combine this task with developing a solution in collaboration with the stakeholder phd students face additional challenges unlike undergraduate or graduate students who are only being challenged by challenge owners the solutions needed by the challenge owners does not necessarily require new knowledge to be brought forth which is not a pro problem for the lower educational levels phd's however express difficulties justifying their scientific contributions in cd The other improvement area that was highlighted is the interdependencies that actually delay the projects. The collaborative nature of CDE appears to sometimes create problems with students being interdependent with each other. When there is a situation of one student being dependent on the input of another student, this could potentially create problems if one student is slower and not as knowledgeable. Since this framework is evolving and we are still faced by several challenges, yet we have been successfully uh, completing or will be completing three cohorts of student exchanges between Botswana and Sweden. With the overall rating being above average, it's much appreciated that the path we have taken is in the right direction, of course with some hiccups. From the view of students, CDE allows peer learning, independent learning, and hence found it to be useful and relevant skill for the fourth industrial revolution, which is building upon the existing digital revolution. We all know that we have to build behaviors that support digital startups reduced cost of customer education, youth population, user adoption boost, cracks and gaps are more visible, increased supply of talent and committed digital workspace. We all know what we should build for the new normal. This CDE framework is a, is a small step, however believed to be a, a very useful tool to build and embed innovation among students' minds. Hence, the observations made during the rollout of CDE uh, will be certainly be useful. And the suggestions that were deduced from this will be quite useful in engineering education. As the government is moving towards new regulations to provide seamless outcome-based education, especially post-COVID, it is believed that such framework would certainly emphasize the shift of teaching and learning practice from teacher-centered design to a learner-centered design. That's all I have for this presentation. I hope it was useful. Uh, these are the references that have been used for this uh, presentation. I suggest that you make a note of them for further reading. I also suggest uh, Future Perspectives on Challenge Driven Education, a report by Johan and Helena. Uh, I recommend this for further reading as it has got interesting collation of case studies from other countries as well. Thank you for your presence. Uh, thank you for listening this presentation. I'm happy to get your queries, uh, though I'm not aware of the time. Uh, however, you can always uh, email uh, me the quer queries, should you have any. I hope you will have useful sessions ahead with lots of academic interactions. Stay safe. Bye for now.